Good morning. Welcome to Facebook Live, uh, our Tuesday tour. Today we're coming outside of do, coming to you from outside of Gumi Hall. It's John Sauter with the Purdue Alumni Association and April Holider behind the camera. And uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about Gumi Hall and its most famous resident, Amelia Earhart. Um, we're coming to you uh, uh, Tuesday, and it's uh, four days before spring break, a little overcast. Uh, but the students are anxious to go on spring break and you may recall from your days uh, what that feeling was like so it's just uh, a great week at Purdue as we're outside Doomy. Doomy Hall uh, opened up in 1934 originally when it opened up it was called South Hall it was the first of uh, five halls in the Windsor complex and uh, it later named in 1942 Doomy Hall for Ophelia Fowler Doomy who actually had land in a neighboring uh, county that was eventually sold and the proceeds of that came to build this particular hall. Uh, quite uh, a facility with grand architecture uh, uh, for, the, for the 30s or so. Uh, but R.B. Stewart had arrived and wanted it to look especially nice. And so a lot of time and attention went into Doomy Hall. So we're gonna go inside and talk a little bit more um, uh, about that. We go up the steps. And you can automatically start seeing here some of the nice architecture like they cut at the doorway one of the differences these days is a card swipe you have to have, normally you have to have a card swipe to get inside the building part of security and all of our residence halls on campus we're going to walk in and uh, actually april will have a chance to turn around and have a look at some of the stained glass window the leaded glass window with the uh somewhat and now uh, you see this particular photograph uh, in a lot of Purdue uh, publicity and marketing and that sort of thing from Dooney Hall. So we're now going to have a chance to look at some of the grand architecture of, of this facility. We're now in the, in the main lobby. You would enter and, and come up into the hall this way. Um, back in the day the house mother lived in an apartment right over here. Each of our facilities had house mothers in fact, when I came in the 70s, we still had some in Windsor Hall. They were the last of those. Many of our sororities and a couple of fraternities have those still these days. But in the residence halls, not so much anymore. The window over here actually was where our night checker would be. The women would check in with the night checker if they were coming in late. Of course, you had to be in by certain hours. Uh, and if you didn't, you got late minutes and all sorts of things would happen. But uh, uh, that's part of the architecture uh, of the facility. A lot of time and attention went into this building. Walter Scholler actually uh, is the person who uh, designed it. It was built by Carl Kettlehut and Kettlehut Construction of Town. And actually they had a comprehensive committee put together. And Virginia Meredith, our first female trustee, chaired the committee. And on the committee was Carolyn Shoemaker, our Dean of Students, and Mary Matthews, head of the uh, Department of Household Economics, was on the committee and got into great detail. In fact, this hall, and many of the halls built around that era have trunk rooms where the women could put their trunk and they put their belongings in a plastic basket and would carry it up to the room and that sort of thing. Um, that went on for quite a few years until students started bringing uh, many more belongings. Uh, it was opened in, again in 1934, built on the Russell farmland. Russell Street is named for the Russell family and this was their farmland uh, that was eventually uh, converted to, you, to university use, and this is where they put the first hall. The hall is situated such that every room but four actually receives sunlight in it sometime during the day. And so unique uh, architecture about it is we'll get to see. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about our famous resident, Amelia Earhart, as we look into the dining room. This is the dining room that actually was, was functioning up until the early 2000s or so when we started consolidating all of our dining rooms. And uh, it is now converted into offices for the Center for Advocacy, Response, and Education. Um, uh, and a variety of offices have, have been here. The Honors College was here for a while. Uh, I call your attention to the slate floor, the original slate floor, just a gorgeous floor. Uh, this is the dining room where the women would eat. In fact, Amelia Earhart's table was back in the far corner. And if you were uh, a young lady living here and you were fortunate enough to get an invitation, on Sunday evenings, you joined Amelia at the table. She had to dress up and have your best manners, and uh, she would uh, uh, 
be in charge of conversation for the table, and you really got to be a part of the Amelia Earhart experience. In fact, at, at Four Corner, uh, again, was, this was a dining room up until the 2000s, and I used to bring my housing staff, my residence hall staff over here for staff meetings, just to kind of get the vibes from that table that used to, to be there, because this is all obviously very, very real. Again, a beautiful lobby uh, area in this facility. Uh, I wanted to have a look down through the, through the courtyard. The halls are situated as such that they all line up. In fact, if all the doors are open, you can look through the main lobbies of four of the five buildings. You could shoot an arrow straight through. And the courtyard out here, a well-maintained courtyard. We actually have weddings that will take place in the courtyard for, uh, for women that have lived here for two or three years, and they become attached to that as they walk on their way to class. Just a nice facility, particularly in the spring and the summertime. Um, we'll have weddings out in that particular location. Now we start uh, walking through the facility itself, and uh, one of the uh, things we want to talk about, of course, is Amelia Earhart. So this is a room that has some memorabilia from, uh, from, from Amelia, and here's a great picture of Amelia, and you've seen this one, I suspect, in front of the Lockheed Electra, the twin-engine Lockheed Electra that the university helped uh, purchase and uh, she used on her ill-fated flight. Amelia Earhart. Amelia Earhart uh, came to the university in 1935. Uh, this all happened because of Edward Elliott. Edward Elliott, our sixth president, was in New York City for the fourth annual Women's Conference on Current Problems, sponsored by the New York Herald Tribune. And uh, he was a speaker. He was asked to be a speaker because he was uh, uh, really uh, wanting to uh, 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 enhance higher education uh, the concept of higher education, particularly for women. And so he was on the speaking schedule, but the woman who spoke before him, Amelia Earhart, uh, gave a presentation on the future of aviation and the role that women will play in it. And he listened to that presentation, was quite impressed, uh, met her after the presentation. That afternoon they had lunch the next day. And uh, they got along very well. Uh, she was aware of Purdue because Purdue had its, uh, Purdue University had its own airport located close to campus and had an aeronautical engineering program. And so uh, that interested her a great deal. He was interested in a career counselor. Uh, and so they uh, basically came to an agreement that she would come out and be a career counselor, a role model for women. Um, uh, they in turn would uh, give her a space to live take care of all the accommodations and all those things. Third thing she was interested in actually was a flying laboratory. She was interested in the effects of long-term flight on, on, uh, on pilots, so those sorts of things. And this is where the thought of her trip around the world came up. And Edward Elliott agreed that the Purdue Research Foundation would help fund uh, the, the plane and the training and the navigation and all the things necessary. And so the Research Foundation actually funded the ill-fated flight, you know, for Amelia Earhart. But she was here between 1935 and 1937. She'd come about every three or four months. She'd be here for about two weeks at a time, and she would give lectures and classes. She would meet with students over meals and uh, uh, really became quite an inspiration for a lot of people on campus. Uh, some of the things in the room that they've, uh, that they've managed to hang on to, one are a couple of proclamations. One is from the mayor of New York City, Another one is from the president of Mexico. Here's a front page news article from the Danville, Illinois Commercial News, dated July the 3rd, 1937, and this is when the word came uh, that she had been lost. Here's a portrait up here of, of Amelia and her husband, George um, Palmer Putnam, and uh, with his uh, best wishes to the university when they had been back, looks like they're at a football game in that particular picture. So. A lot, of mem uh, a lot of memorabilia here. In fact, there's more located at Purdue than any place in the world. Uh, all of it's stored in our archives area. So now we're going to walk a little bit more through uh, Dumey Hall. This is the uh, living room. Again, the architecture from the ceiling to the floor to the furniture uh, to the fireplace, which still works. Uh, really a, a very, very ornate feel that you get from this facility from 1934, well maintained with the amount of uh, renovation and repair funds that have been put back into it. 
uh, in the evenings. This is uh, crowded with uh, people are studying and that sort of thing. On the side, we have uh, date rooms. We refer to as date rooms, now study rooms. Um, when the hall opened in 1934, of course, uh, men and women needed a place to, to get together once in a while, and so they have these three different date rooms located through here, and this is where the men and women could actually meet and socialize. And, uh, of course, I understand the rule was three feet on the floor at all times, and all those sorts of things apply. Um, but just another nice offering. Uh, here I want to point out on the wall, they have a nice uh, photo recognition of Janice Voss. Janice Voss was Purdue's first female astronaut. Uh, she also lived in Doomy Hall, so I suppose she's the second most famous resident of this particular facility. Uh, Janice is near and dear to me. I actually got to know Janice quite a bit. She came back many times to give uh, inspirational talks to women about careers and that sort of thing. She lived in this hall because Amelia had lived in the hall, as a matter of fact. Uh, and. Uh, Got to know her and her parents, and obviously she did, uh, she did a few launches and passed away, unfortunately. But uh, she also lived in Doomy Hall. Um, we're now going to walk down the hallway. That's another day room. This is actually the hallway now. We're getting close to where Amelia Earhart uh, actually lived. So now we're on the hallway. We're headed to room 103. 103 is the, is the room where... Uh, Amelia lived. Uh, I point out on the door, still in Windsor, they have the tradition if, uh, if you've lived in the room uh, as a senior and you graduate from the room, you get a nameplate put, put up on the door. And so that's true in most of our residence halls. Not all, but most of them. So it's kind of a nice tradition. Sherry Thomas says that that's her old room. Oh, wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. This will bring back some memories. 103, right there it is. So now we're in the room, Sherry, you can see uh, what a room look, looks like today, very well decorated by, by our student um, who, who lives in the room and uh, with uh, desk, refrigerators, no computer in this particular room, although it must be a laptop tucked away someplace. It has two desks and two beds. Uh, right now, this year, it's being used as a double as housing is... Uh, significantly oversubscribed and they really need space and so it's a double although it's being operated as a single right now. Here's the closet. You can get a feel for how small the closets are um, where Amelia would have uh, kept her clothing and all those sorts of things. Nice high ceilings uh, in the room. Um, April's actually standing under what is now an air conditioning unit. All the rooms in the Windsor complex are now air conditioned. Um, by, by a central air conditioning system, and so they all had to be retrofitted, uh, but it's put in as such that it looks like it's just a part of the room, and you really wouldn't know uh, it's there in terms of not having any exposed pipes, you know, and those sorts of things. Uh, back in the corner, in this narrow door, actually is the bathroom. So this is where the bathroom is. Um, and so actually it was, when Amelia was here, it was a single with its own bath which is uh, highly sought after uh, back then, of course, and even today, you know. Uh, so this is a room that uh, we have a lot of women who want to live in Doomy 103, particularly if they're going in the aeronautic, nautical engineering program or astronautics or they're pilots or all those sorts of things. Um, uh, this is the room that has those vibes because Amelia just brought with her all that excitement and all that courage, actually, and whenever she did anything, it created a trend. In fact, in the dining room that I pointed out to you, uh, she actually preferred buttermilk with her meals. And all of a sudden, food stores on this campus had to get extra supplies of buttermilk because all the women started drinking buttermilk as a result of Amelia Earhart um, uh, preferring buttermilk and that sort of thing. But just a great tradition, um, uh, wonderful facility, and it's all part of uh, the uh, uh, Purdue history, uh, it, it's real and we're just so proud to be able to show it off. Um, having seen this room, it actually makes us uh, think that maybe in the future we'll do one of these presentations and we'll show you different student rooms these days as to how they have evolved uh, over the year. That might be a nice offering also. So, uh, so that's it for this session of uh, Facebook Live. We hope you enjoyed a look at Doomy. Uh, a look around uh, Amelia Earhart's room and brought up some memories about Amelia when she was here. 
Uh, we enjoy doing these. In fact, next month, we're going to be on the Grand Prix track. So you'll have that one. I make sure you tune in, and we're going to talk about the Grand Prix and look at the new track facility they have uh, and, uh, and feature that in our presentation. And so, uh, on behalf of April and the Alumni Association, it's John Sauter saying, Hail Purdue.